Hi everyone, welcome to Cat's Creations Live on a Friday night where tonight we are going to be making a summer wreath. This one inspired around the theme of lemons. So the sign is from Craft Outlet. We're using a 14 inch Dollar Tree wreath frame. As I introduce the products, I'll tell you what they're cut to and where I purchased them from. Um, if you are new here, I'd love to welcome you, especially if you're a first time viewer. Just let us know where you are from so that we can pair you up with a fellow crafting person that you might meet on the Facebook Live. Um, if you wanna get notified when we go live, make sure you click the like and follow button. Now you might be asking yourself, well, I already have done that. Did you know that every time Facebook does an update, it resets all of your um, values or things that you have in place back to a default mode. So if you guys can do me a favor really quick on the video, click the upper three dots in the upper right hand corner and just make sure your turn live notifications is set to on. You might be surprised to find out that you thought they were and now it, because you're actually having to actually activate that button, um, notifications were turned off. So Anytime you're not getting notifications, just double check that. A lot of times we don't know what Facebook does behind the scenes. So this way it'll make sure that you don't miss any of the people that you're looking forward to um, seeing. YouTube subscribers, super simple for you. Just in the upper right hand corner, click the subscribe bell. That way when we upload a new video, you will have a chance to view that. Um, okay, Stephanie Munoz says, uh, first time watching from Dallas, Texas. So welcome, welcome Stephanie. Stephanie. Hi, Dallas. Hi, everybody. Cool. Oh, and you got the updates, the, the, the pad. That was what I was trying to do. Make sure you have materials list. So um, if you guys leave a comment, you're asking questions. My husband, Steve's going to be filling those questions for you. Um, if your question isn't answered, because sometimes there's a little bit of a delay, um, and you see it's not getting answered, do me a favor and just go ahead and retype in that question again to make sure that we don't miss it and that your concerns are addressed. Um, I think that's it. If you guys like this design and want to replicate it, once you get all your supplies in, clicking the share button at the bottom will post this to your Facebook page, making it much easier to find when you're ready. And I think with that, we're ready. I am just going to finish wiring up my 14 inch Dollar Tree frame. I've already done five of the six sections so that you can see how to easily do this. You're going to take your pipe cleaner in between the two sections you have weld marks and then you're going to go with the inner two most rings. You're just going to find a midway point for that. It doesn't have to be exact but what you do want to try to make sure is that your pipe cleaners and um, the ends are roughly the same height, the same length so that it's easy for you to go ahead and utilize the full length of that pipe cleaner. And then you're gonna use this one, your weld mark, and you're gonna to wire together the outside too. Just like this. Making sure those are on there fairly tight. We're gonna do one to the other side. This will give you a grand total of 12 to the outside, six on the inside for a total total of 18 and then we're ready to go. If you guys have any questions at all uh, about how to wire the 14 inch Dollar to wreath ring. And that's just for this particular tutorial. Some people might want to wire it differently. This is just the recipe for what works for me on this design. So feel free if you wanna change it and try something else, feel free to um, go ahead and venture forth. You never know, you might make the next viral wreath based tutorial. All right, we're going to be using a different kind of mesh. This is still called polypropylene mesh, but if you notice, it's almost like a waffle weave. It's got a lot bigger columns and rows. So this is from Craft Outlet. These are cut to 20 inch pieces. We are just going to ruffle this. The nice thing about this particular mesh is it's almost like it's perfect. Like when you stretch it out, there's no like waviness in the, in the mesh. So everything is like, if you're cutting your mesh, like you could use the wood burning tool with this. This is what I did. It helps keep frays to a minimum. 
um, but it just looks perfect. Like if you were looking to make a perfect mesh wreath, this might be it with this particular type. I'm going to start on the inside. I'm going to make sure that I have that pretty well centered. We're going to go ahead and tie that down just like that. Give it a couple twists just to make sure it doesn't come out. We'll go ahead and remove the excess. And with that little piece, we're just going to go ahead and push that down. Thank you, Anna, for sending 200 stars. That was what it meant to address. <laughs> so stars. Um, we're going to leave it up to you this month um, to determine what we should use the stars money for. So the stars for Facebook viewers is at the bottom next to the comment. You'll notice a gold little star. Those allow you to go ahead and some people use it as a tip. Each star is worth one cent. We've been using the stars money that you guys um, send us to fundraise. So I'm kind of at a loss with what should we do for this month. I already have it for next month, but um, Steve came up with a great suggestion to have you guys go ahead and pick. So um, make a suggestion and uh, we will move forward from that and pick a one that we want to. Okay, we said a dog shelter. Yeah, we did the yeah. dog shelter thing. Was it? I, want to say, yeah. I think we did it in February. We did the whole Betty White where everybody was donating. Mm -hmm. So we did the local animal shelters. So um, Nancy asked, I'm, I'm kind of late, man. What kind of mesh is that? It's a waffle mesh, right? Yeah, it's kind of like a waffle weave mesh. Where did you get it from? Craft Outlet. Craft Outlet. This is new. You have it on the list. It doesn't say Craft Outlet. Oh, but this you should be able to. Okay. In that case, if you don't have a part number on the materials list, it's Craft Outlet. I was just going through and verifying and looking things up because a lot of times when you get packing slips from your orders, the prices aren't showing. So, this is a standard ruffle design. Yes, this is a standard ruffle, but this is going to make a, it's almost going to be a precise. And the reason why I chose this one is it kind of looks like maybe a mesh bag that produce comes in. It's kind of got that little mesh bag that you can kind of see through. Um, and that's why we're going a little bit thicker. And the sign is from Craft Outlet. Craft Outlet as well. Yeah, I didn't put a thing on it next to it, right? Nope. Okay, so if there's no vendor, Craft Outlet. I think I did all the other ones. Okay. So I'm trying to make sure that my pleats are pretty perfect as I'm pulling this towards me, just so that it's nice and organized. Um, finished edges will always go towards the inside and outside because fraying occurs where the mesh is cut, which is what we're kind of trying to prevent by placing that finished edges to the inside and finished edges on the outside. And you were able to use a wood burning tool on that, right? I was able to use a wood burning tool on this. Yes. Okay, and I'm just gonna re-overlap these right over my center one. Always making sure that I've got my pipe cleaners where they need to be. Shine to everyone, love the sign. Sign from Craft Outlet. Yeah, it's a new sign. Now that lemons are, I guess as we're starting to enter into summer now, you have all the fruit theme wreaths. You have watermelons, oranges, blueberries, strawberries, blueberries, blueberries yeah. Apples. So because this one had that French country color that we loved with the last bluebird lemon one we did, I kind of felt, oh, this is a new mesh. That would be fun to try when we make the... Um, the new lemon one. Sharon, this is a new mesh uh, called Waffle Mesh from Craft Outlet, and they are cut to 20 inches, right? Yes. 20 inches. Yes, indeed. 18 pieces. Mm-hmm. 
18 pieces at 20 inches will give you exactly 360 inches. So it should use up the entire roll. I'm trying to find new techniques now that don't leave us with any leftovers, especially on the mess, mesh side of things, because that becomes a pain when you have a ton of it to store. And odds are you're probably never going to use it anyway. Kathy, yeah, I love the yellow. It's so bright in the summer. It is. Hey, guys, please feel free to share this on your page. It helps with uh, cat. Plus, if you want to watch it, it's easier for you to just pull it right off of your page. Absolutely. So what you're noticing on the ones that I'm putting to the inside, if you look on our layout here, we have an inside and then two outsides. So what I'm putting, I'm actually laying my deco mesh in with like how every pipe cleaner comes into play. When you get to the middle one, uh, once we have this one here, I kind of push the sides of this mesh roll to the side lay this one in and then I'll come back and just lay that back over the top so that the middle kind of acts as a filler for the outside too. So, am I doing that? No, I'm finishing oh, the outside. Let's Kathy. She said uh, April is World Autism Month. Oh, nice. We donate stars to autism. Okay. Where's the one? Thank you, Kathy. Well, that's why I said you guys will probably have a ton of suggestions. Um, yeah. Definitely. Okay, so this again, see here's my inside. This is my outside finishing up that section. I just take the opportunity and make sure that the inside one now is laying up and underneath so that it fills the section between those two. I'll make sure those kind of overlock and there we go it's a very stiff mesh so when you lay it in it's not going to move very much hey Sharon hey gals join guys and gals I was surprised that I was able to cut through this because it felt like the vertical um lines the ones that are going up and down this way towards the finished edge, um, they're kind of a, it seems like a natural material, but maybe it's more of a plastic coated piece. Yeah. Well, yes, I got mentioned nice and bright yellow. I know, right? Uh, Vicki asked, did you sell the canvas being right? I didn't see it on your site. It's on my website. It is on my website. Because I just... It's not an empty, it's on our actual website, catspirationsandmore.com. Yes, it is there. Yeah, matter of fact, I was like, just researching. Because um, it just seems like, I don't know, Pinterest has been kind of weird lately. Um, and then there's a tip about using Pinterest, that if you're using Pinterest... Um, and including a link directly to the product, if the product sells out, which most of us have products sell out after a while, we never go back in and update the pin. However, when someone else finds it and clicks on it, what's end up happening is you get this product is sold out, but here's a list of everybody else that's selling something similar. So for you as a business owner, you kind of don't want that. So it's better just to have it default to like your home new product page um, and then people can search for it that way. And who knows, maybe they came there looking for one thing and they find something else they like or, oh wow, I could get this for so and so. Okay. Two twists. Making sure these are out. Refluff. Making sure my middle is filled. And then make sure these are all readjusted. Find your pipe cleaners. So that when we get ready for our ribbons, we know where everything is at. The interesting thing is if I would have just done this all yellow pipe cleaners, it'd be kind of hard, kind of hard to find them. Yeah. Really. <laughs> I mean, this is kind of just a slight little bit of an orange tint to it mm -hmm. like it's a little bit on a darker yellow yeah 
but yeah, I'm going to push any of those over. Okay. So what I'm saying with the whole... Yeah, so this is a happy yellow. It is a happy yellow. It's a sunny yellow. Yeah. So like this, we were just kind of keeping that to the side till we get the middle one in. Bob Rossi is it a Bob Rossi yellow? Yeah. Is it Bob Ross or Bob Rossi? I think Rossi. I think it's Ross. Bob Ross. You're right, it is Bob Ross. Okay. Bob Ross. Okay. A couple more pieces. Alrighty. Branching this one back out. So now, with the fact that I have my inside one here, what I'm going to do is kind of pull the one before it up and over. So now that fills that section. You're going to do the same on the top. And so now that lays perfectly flat, and that becomes a filler. And then we'll place the other one directly on top of it on the opposite side. So that's how the ruffles are going in place. They're just kind of slightly stacking on top of the inner ones. Okay, so here's our other outside piece. This one actually lays easier because we've already done it to the inside. Pull this out of the way. Pop that open, move that to the side. Okay. I like this mesh, I have to say. So if you're looking for something that looks very clean, very neat, and you will like the quality of this, even though I think when you're looking it up on Craft Outlet's site, it comes up polypropylene mesh, but it's different. It's not metallic, it's not fabric, and the size of the rows and columns are much larger. Mm. Okay, so this is our inside. We're just leaving it to the side until we put the other center piece in. How's the coverage so far? So far, the coverage looks really good. And the size of the sign is a 12 inch round. So it's really going to take up a lot of real estate on this wreath. Where have you been making the tin so much better? Hmm? Where have you been making the tin so much better? Right? Yeah. Gives you more room to work with. I had a toss up. I was either going to go with a square 8 inch or it might be at a square 10 inch. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of thought this would look a little nicer. I like the color mix. On this one a little bit better. Okay, two more and we're finished with our base. Do you guys have any questions I can answer for you about the mesh, the layout, the sign? Is our other, so we're gonna make sure it overlap, pull to the side, make sure we can get this last little piece in. Yeah, she was the yellow looks beautiful and we can stand up. It really so. does. And we're actually gonna pop this with a lot of blue to really bring the blue back in. So I had a choice of the dark blue mesh or this yellow, and I thought, you know what? This is a new mesh. Let's try it, see how it goes. Um, and I like it. Deborah, 18 pieces all cut to 20 inches. Yes. Oops, with these two. Charlene, yeah, she's using the 14 inch Dollar Tree wreath form. Okay, we are all set. So there is our base.
coverage. Okay. We're going to go ahead and add in some ribbons. So let's split these. We're coming in with a two and a half inch. This is the lemon on white. And this is from Kringle Designs. So I'll have Steve put that link in there for ya. You want the link? Uh, KringleDesigns.us. Okay. Yeah. Well, like I said, I can't get my clothing size to look good. Do you ever have this problem? How do you fix it? Um, I think it depends on your base method. If you're trying to put it on top of a cruffle or a curl, you're really going to fight the curls because the curls are all going to be coming in the middle. And then you kind of have to either smash them to put your sign on because it's really going to take in, like, where our six pipe cleaners we cut out. That's the the area in which that sign's gonna lay. So if I have a 12 inch round sign, I'm generally gonna put it on a ruffle base. And then we have the lemon on blue. And this was from Craft Outlet. So lemon on white is Crinkle, and the lemon on blue is Craft Outlet. They're both cut to 14 inch pieces. And we're just fanning those to the outside. Get rid of these. So I'm putting the white where our yellow pipe cleaners are and the blue where our blue pipe cleaners are. And then we're just pulling the ends towards the outside. Because then that kind of draws the eye outward from the center. Kind of makes your wreath look a lot bigger. For the sign, is a, oh, she asked, does the sign come in 10 inch also? No. No, just 12 inch, and it's from Craft Outlet. Yeah. If you get it from one of the sign makers, like Personalize It by Pam, a lot of the sign makers now are making 10 inch rounds. Yeah. I know Pam does. Uh, Kathy, yeah, so far the mesh does completely cover the frame. Mm -hmm. um, you can see it under the picture. She hasn't seen any issues at all. Looks like it gives pretty good coverage. Yeah, because it's so thick. Even though it's got, you know, wide spaces, mm -hmm. it's thick columns. So yeah. it's a lot thicker in the rows. For the 12 inch sign, I think you're kind of limited more to kind of having it right in the center. Yes. You don't really have much of a choice. Right. Okay. Grab this one. So we're trying to put as much blue in as possible without going like all blue. Mm -hmm. So she starts out with one ribbon per five, and then she'll go back in and add the inch and a half on top of it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes I like to just throw Steve a curve because he gets used to this is the way it goes. Just like the dimensions. There's a Tanisha that said I found that sign in eight inches at a general wholesale. Mm -hmm. um, Charlene says yes, Pam also makes a 10 inch round. But I don't think, so Pam probably does have something like that, but not that exact She same. does. She, she does? has something similar, similar but right. not the same sign. So you can't get something similar at Personalize It by Pam? Yeah, you can look at any sign vendor and just look, you know, search for 10 inch round and see what they have. Right. Usually I just go, you know, and, and type in 10 inch lemon sign. And this was just something I had ordered in my craft outlet box. Like I was ordering lemon stuff anyway, and this was in their new product. So I was like, oh, I haven't seen that. Okay, we'll try that. Okay. Pulling up. Trying to reposition my pipe cleaners because I pulled them down into the left, so now I'm having to re straighten them out. Just a couple more. Okay. Okay. 
15 more. So are all of the lemon um, ribbons from Pringle? No. The blue mm -hmm. it's craft outlet. It's got the number skews that start like, I don't know. RGC? No. The white? The lemon, Steve. Mm -hmm. Look, lemon on white is crinkle. The lemon on blue is craft outlet. Okay, okay these are going back out. Last one. And then we'll go and add in our inch and a half. Okay. Let's make sure I'm getting those up and out. Okay, so there's our 14 inch tails. Now we're gonna come in and um, add what we call half bows. Again, we have the inch and a half cut to 19 inch pieces. The blue on the lemon is from Craft Outlet. And then the gingham, which is a royal blue on white. This is really hard to find. Um, where did I get this from? I don't think I have it written on your thing, Steve. Mm -hmm. um, I did find it on Craft Outlet a long time ago, but it's been sold out. So honestly, now you have to just type in royal blue and white gingham and see if anyone out there happens to have a roll or two left because yeah. it's been sold out for a very long time. So to make the half bows, you're going to take your pieces, you're going to put them end to end. You're gonna go up about two inches from the top and pinch in. We're going to take the blue gingham and we're gonna place that on top of our blue with the lemons. Gonna go ahead and twist. That's a bitch you want to go make some fresh lemonade. I know. Or have a piece of lemon meringue pie. Now we can obviously be crazy in that mess, I make yeah, because she was able to use the wood burning tool. Yes. The wood burning tool makes all the difference in the world. So now to fluff the half bows, you're going to, once it's in, you twist your pipe cleaners to end it, tuck the stem right behind the loop. You're gonna to have to right side one of your ends. So open up your loop like so, and then you're just going to fan out your tails. Well, thank you, Kathleen. She said, I can't express my love for you all. This has been a rough week and a half. Thank you for all being there. Oh, you're so welcome. It's so great to have a really good supportive community. So I'm going to go in and lay these all the way around on my blue. Do those really quick. Uh, open up. Flip one side. So they just kind of create like a 3D awareness bow. I just always thought when I first started wreath making that if you didn't put something in there, you know, in your twist ties, even if you added double ribbons and kind of fan those out, I always felt like it was missing something. Like my eye was drawn to that, like it was an unfinished center. the way in the back. Flip that open. I know, right? You can just smell like ice cold lemonade, super tart, over ice in a mason jar glass. Very tart. today today's the eighth so private group is closing to new members in a week 
So if you guys have been sitting on the fence about joining, you have this week till next weekend to sign up and then it's going to stay closed for um, most of the summer. So. Here's a couple of great testimonials for you guys. Uh, Karen Jones says, every time I watch you, I learn something new. I love how you teach, plus how you pray for others. Oh, I love to do that. And then Karen says, thank you for sharing your valuable time and instructions with us. Love to read. Thank you so much. We have another woman that always gives cat praise. Her name's Audrey. She does it at the end of every life. She's also mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah, we try. I think it's our greatest honor to pray for people. I guess you would say that privilege. It doesn't cost anything. Mm -hmm. it does an awful lot. Okay, we've got one more. I'm trying to get this one to fan out. There we go. Last one. And then I'll show you how we situate that 12 inch sign on this wreath. It's funny before, what, before 10 inch, um, all we had was nine inch, which always, always felt a little too small. So we kind of were relegated to the 12 inch. Mm -hmm. So you just got used to designing around a larger sign. Last one, and then we'll work on the other, the white background, which is where we're going to take our lemon again, just to make that more predominant. So this is going on our white. We're going to do the exact same thing. Half bows. In. So if you'd like to join the perfect group, if you just go to capscreationsandmore.com, right at the very top of the page, you'll see everything about the private group, everything you get when we meet, which is every Sunday, no, not every Sunday, every Monday and Tuesday. Um, if you can't make it, replays are always recorded. Um, copies of the materials list. Um, access to my entire library for over four years worth of videos. So lots of stuff, lots of content that you get. Oops, I'm trying to get this one out of the way. Had the mesh in the way. I think this will be the right pop of blue, considering where most of that yellow is, is where we're gonna be placing our sign. Even though the sign in the middle is yellow and white, the outside border is going to really tie it in with the gingham and blue. Baby, the name of the mesh is a uh, waffle mesh. But when you're on the craft aisle, it's like, right? It doesn't necessarily it doesn't say, say it. It doesn't say waffle mesh. Nope. You'll, you'll know when you're looking at it. Um, you can just type in like yellow 10-inch deco mesh and you'll see it. I think it's because most of the other yellow is sold out. And I literally what it says on the label it just says deco poly mesh. It doesn't even say color. But you can see. I think I'd use something similar to this, a little bit bigger, when we did an Easter wreath mm -hmm. and we used a lavender colored mesh. Yes. It was like this. Tracy said, I just joined and I am so excited to learn new things. Awesome, Tracy. Love having you be a part of our group. Yes. Kathy will get that um, confirmation probably later tonight. And she'll, she'll talk to you and then approve you if you took all the steps. Here we go. Uh, three more. The blue on the, the lemons on the blue is a really thick canvas mesh. 
So the lemons are painted on, so it's really thick, which is good. So the quality is there for that. Lemons on the top. I'm still trying to debate if I want the lemons on top or I want the gingham on top. I think I want most of the blue to show. I will plug in my glue gun so that heats up. There's so many different things you could do. Um, if you had yellow and blue scatters and fillers, you could leave your pipe cleaners there and just add those to the end. Just add a little fun sparkle or yellow, white, and blue. There's our last one. And trying to find the, this royal, royal blue is difficult. Most of the time you get it too light or you get the navy. So I love working with the, the darker royal blue. Okay, let's go ahead and work on our bow. So this is what we've got so far. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to set this aside. We are going to put our white down first, and then um, we'll add our blue to the top. So I'm going to start with our two and a half inch. We're going to do a dovetail end, which is just bring your wired edges together. You're going to cut from the folded side down to the wired point. So depending upon how deep you want that V is where you're going to start it on that fold line. Now if I find fairly deep, there's some people who do really shallow, so that's up to you. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be a 10 inch tail. So we're just gonna gather right at the 10 inch mark. You're gonna twist it. Robert and Robert says it's already beautiful for me. I know, right? You could just leave it like that and make a centerpiece. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do five and a half inch loops. So everything on the Bodabra is a twist and then just slide it in. But then I'm always going to bring it back and make sure that my loop stops at the five and a half inch mark. So right in here. Then we're just going to do yeah. that again. So she'll set the center on the 10, right? Mm -hmm. And it took down on five and a half inches on the loop. Yeah, you just pull it out. And then back out here. Trim this. Dovetail it. There's that. Okay, and then we'll add our blue. And this one's going to be nine and a half inches with a five inch loop. And once you get to know like bow recipes, meaning you know how full they'll be, how tall they'll be, how far they're going to extend out, can you manipulate them, you know, to fit a sign size, um, then you'll just kind of follow that recipe all the way through. So, nine and a half inches. We're doing a five inch. Go right there. Flip it over. Walker well, says, I have a lemon sign with the black polka dots. Um, giving me some great ideas for mine. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. I find that if you just stay with two to three colors, it doesn't get so overwhelming. You're not trying to have to match everything. Mm -hmm. 
you know, I'm not having to try to match the green or uh, the different, uh, the other shades of blue color in there. I just picked blue, yellow, and white. And then I just theme everything around that. Okay. Then we are going to take the other three, which is a solid yellow. We have the blue with the yellow, the gingham. And then we also have a white um, on canvas. So I think I want my lemon to be on the outside. So I think I'm going to mix them up like this is how they're going to kind of go in there. And I might have to get my other roll because I don't know if there's enough on that spool um, to, to make the bow, but we'll see. We'll just try to use it up if we can. Uh, the blue and white canvas that I have right here is Kringle Designs as well. And if you're on Kringle, you might notice the prices are a little on the high side. It's because you get 50% off when you check out if you use the code 5050. So always make sure before you check out, you apply the coupon and that the coupon took your half price off. So this inch and a half is gonna sit at a nine inch tail, a four and a half inch loop, another let's see if we got four and a half yep and then nine inches and dovetail again this is another one of those ribbons where it's painted on okay and then our yellow the solid yellow is from the Race Shop. It's another vendor that you can order from online. So we're gonna put in that sunny yellow again. No worries, Rosalind. She said, sorry, I'm late. We'll have to watch the replay. Oh, no worries. This is gonna be eight and a half inches. And we're gonna keep the same loop size for the two middle. So they're both going to be four and a half inches. So because we've already measured one, we can just put our fingers in both, give it a pull, <clears throat> up and around, make sure they're both the same, but we do need to make sure the tail length stops at the eight and a half. There we go. Solids are what we have a tendency of forgetting. So even if you had a white, a solid white, a solid yellow, and a solid blue, that would make for a really gorgeous bow as well. Let's see if we're gonna have enough. Let's see, eight, eight. We might have just enough. We'll try it. If not, I have another roll. Be great if it worked out exact. So this one's going to be eight inches. So here's our eight. We're doing a four inch loop for this one. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think we're going to be way short. Don't know how that one works out. Okay. So we'll just remeasure this. It would have been nice. I'll do that one's a little too shallow for me. Got more of a point on it. Eight. Oop, 
What am I doing? Okay. Four. Uh, Mickey Kringle Designs is a website. They're a reseller, just kind of like craft items. Yeah, you don't need to have a business license. Anyone can order from them. Yep. They do not have free shipping, but because you get such a deep discount on your supplies, it kind of helps make up for that. And they sell really good quality stuff. I just put their links. You should be actually be able to just click on the link and then they'll take you to their website. So you can do that actually. And we'll make sure we keep this because you never know if you need an extra couple of tails or two. Just not worth it anyway. And the last one is our lemon yellow, which is going to be seven and a half inch tails and three and a half inch loop. Seven and a half. Twist. So you still have six different ribbons in this one. There's still six, yes. Okay, we'll try for three and a half. Three and a half. So all of our ribbons are in, they're all stacked. Okay, now we need a pipe cleaner. It's handy if you bend it beforehand and just tell like a little U shape. And as you pick this up, you're gonna place your hands on both sides and press down, lift up. Just reposition your hands so you can slide your pipe cleaner down. You're going to hold it right at the bottom and twist the stack. You could do it with floral wire if you prefer. You could do it with a zip tie if you'd prefer. Um, okay. Let me grab the board that we're going to fluff on. off to the side. So I am just going to use this C hook. I'm going to get my C hook to grab onto my pipe cleaner just by kind of sliding it in and around just like that. All it does is keep the ribbon from sliding off the board. The board itself is heavy enough that it's not going to move. So then this allows me to begin to separate my ribbons. So I separate by loops from tails on one side, working the bottom down. So we start at the bottom and then work our way up. And then off to the other side, we're going to shave our tail and then our loop to the other side. So tails are directly, or loops are directly across, tails are directly across from each other. And then you just work the next set down opposite. So here we have our tail and our loop. Go back over to the other side. Going to grab my tail and loop. And now what this has done is it staggered the colors all the way around, loops and tails. So I'm just going to follow these down. So loop and tail. Loop or tail. There's the loop loop and tail, loop and tail, okay, down. Catherine yeah, asked, could you do the bow with the tails going down? Yeah, you just have to move them down. Oh yeah, you can do whatever you'd like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this way I know where it's going to go, so I'm kind of positioning it for kind of like splaying out, but yeah. As a designer, you can do whatever you want. Um, generally, what I do is I like to keep my tails 
in the same spot, loops in the same spot, especially if you have a corner sign or like, you know, it's gonna go, the bow is gonna kind of go up here. So it'll frame the welcome. You'll still see the lemons. I think it should work out good. We'll see. So now we're just gonna pick up our loops, pull up, decide what colors you want where, where do you want your tails to fall? I don't know, like these opposite. If you want to put the curls back in, just kind of run them through your fingers. So just like that, I'm going to pull my yellow to the side, like the way that looks there. I'm going to do. Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. They usually do those on the lanterns or um, mm -hmm. floral arrangements. We'll actually put this one right between. Karen, uh, yeah, she has put two bows on her reach. She's even had some where she's had three. Yeah. 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 Yep. On something like this with a 12 inch sign, I wouldn't put that many bows on it. Yeah, There's just not know. enough room. Unless you really want to cover up everything you already did. And at that point, because you're paying so much for your materials and your ribbons, um, I just have a hard time with that when everything is covered and I can't see. I mean, the mesh is pretty on its own. Hold this. Make sure you like where everything is laying. You as the designer decide what you like, where. Okay, so there's your bow. Yep. Okay. So now we're gonna go ahead and pop this off. I'm trying to get it off. There we go. Set that off to the side. What's that? Well, yeah, she does double bows all the time too. Like when she does every other ribbon, she's doing little double bows. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this one already has holes in the sign, so I'm going to take advantage of those holes. I'm going to use 22 gauge floral wire. You can use pipe cleaners. Good time for me to get more wire here soon. Mm. I'm going through a lot. Okay, so I always build my wire base from behind, which means all I do is bring my wire up. You could do the same thing with your pipe cleaner, but build it on the back, right over the hole. Three. So it kind of puts a little bit of a, a lip on the um, wire. Mm -hmm so that it's not spinning like a spinner, but it's sitting flat behind the sign. Otherwise, if you did it out to the side, you're gonna see the wire out to the side. I also want to love the wheel design. Yeah, that's basically an old fashioned bicycle thing. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, we just spray painted it lavender. So it's those all... that way as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're flipping this over. So it's going to go right in the center. So look at it before I even put our bow on. Let me show you what this looks like. Like that. So now you can see mm -hmm. that all that yellow now is gone. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm going right over. My inside pipe cleaners, there just happens to be one right here. That makes it easy because I know the frame is right below that. You just bring your sign up. A lot of times I'll pull some of my mesh out. Richard says tab. Put a tab like a lemon flavored something. I don't know. I never drank tab. Tab seemed like it was like the diet drink back in the day. Yeah. 
So I just kind of push it down at the height that I want it to sit. Do a couple twists, get the bottom in, and then we can go ahead and just sort through, pull our, you'll see, I'll pull the, um, the ruffles out so it'll Rachel, start to do you, frame. Do you find having a hole is easier to attach to than using the tan ties? They both work fine. What do you mean? The, the pipe cleaners, like the tan based pipe cleaners. You can even poke the hole with the beadsmith and then still just use the regular floral wire. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I just like floral wire if I know that I'm dealing with the mesh that has a lot of the natural fibers in it because it's a pipe cleaner has a tendency, it always gets stuck on that one little thread. The only one that you're hoping, you know, is not going to get stuck on. Oh, gotcha, Richard. He said the tab. He's talking about the commercial mount that you use oh. for zip ties. Yeah, I don't like those. Yeah, it's hard for you to use those on a metal sign because they'll pop off in the, in the heat. temperatures. Yeah. yeah. You'd have to, like, reinforce it with glue. Glue, yeah. Just so they don't come off. I've seen that, just having them here... You know sitting on my walls and during the winter i noticed one of my signs was like hanging half off it's just the tab due to the weather it just got so cold um just popped the tab off and i was like can't have that because glad it happened to me here and not at a client's so i'm just pulling some of my mesh it's all kind of overly grabby, just pulling that up and out. This, I'm okay with keeping it tucked. I'll tuck this part in as well, because this is where our bow is gonna sit, so we need a nice soft landing space, not only for the bow, but for all the tails, where the tail's gonna fall to. You don't want them hanging way up over your mesh, um, and we can always readjust once we get the bow on. So our bow is going to go mm -hmm. right here. See, I need to move. Yeah, Richard said he did use glue as well. Mm -hmm. uh, she prefers the hole now. Yeah, a hole on a metal, um, unless it's always a hole in a metal sign. Um, unless the sign is just way too thick and I can't, you know, get that beadsmith in there. So I'm going to set this right on top. This is going to kind of fall over here. So it's sitting right over the W. I just want to make sure where it's sitting. Just like that. Now I just got to get it down to the bottom. And because there's a pipe cleaner on this one, those are where it's getting, it kind of gets hung up on um, the fibers in that waffle mesh. So we're just going to pull it to where it starts to meet a little bit of resistance. We're going to reorganize everything. Yeah, that's where should you make the holes, top or bottom or side to side? That's wherever you feel comfortable. Um, most of the time I always go side to side, yeah. but I just took advantage of the fact that this already had the top and the bottom already done. So there was no point in doing any more additional holes. Okay. Yeah, Rachel said he just bought two gnome signs from Scott Mm-hmm. And they were like a corrugated plastic and not metal. He was kind of disappointed. Oh, that's not good. I would be disappointed too. And that's a sad thing. I mean, I guess we have to really, honestly, the more... You know, yeah, yeah, we purchase really. supplies. You have to kind yeah. of read the descriptions now because way back in the days, we didn't have to read, you know. Well, we did, but we didn't have to, like, question the material quality. 
And now you have to look and see, is that going to be like a polyester, shiny kind of a satin thing? Because right. um, you those are so hard to work with. Okay, so now let me show you what this looks like. Kind of give you that life to those tails. Here's what it looks like right now. Okay, let's add some lemon picks to this just to really drive home the lemon theme as if they couldn't tell. But you never know. This is sometimes a nice little addition. So I have this pick that came from White Bayou Creations. Um, it was when they were doing their sale. So I'm going to take this. We're going to break it down. We're going to add some fun picks. One of these days, it's going to just bury those wire cutters because I know I shouldn't be using them. So there's that one. We will take the pull that off. I'm trying to let's see. This is a really big pick. So got some lemon leaves that are really nice. And let's see where we can place these. I might not want to use all of them. Because that's a pretty big stem. Kind of like it down in here. And that's a really big pick. So I think I'm gonna to have to break that pick apart. and just create my own. Because that's just way too thick to work with. Much better. So it has a little bit of the uh, lemon blossoms, a little bit of fern, a little bit of, um, what would you call it? Lemon leaves. Yeah. yeah. So, that green. Just want to put a piece of floral wire on just to make sure the pick is not too big. Okay, let's see if we like that look. I like that one. I think kind of want, maybe we'll do one down here. We'll create another little pick. Uh oh, we'll just have a lot of lemon pieces left over. There's a lot in there. That's a pretty meaty pick. So our stem, our lemon, mm, kind of like this one. What if? Mm, maybe not. This is a little bit bigger. Has a nice coverage. Ooh, I like that. Okay. So let me floral wire that together. And then we'll go ahead and set it. I just like using the thicker gauge floral wire just because as I've gotten older, my ability to use your fingers like a pincher mm -hmm. um, just does not work very well anymore. So. I'm going to coat the bottom 
and right in here just to kind of hold everything together. This is Gorilla Glue set on a hot temperature. Setting it on a hot temperature, okay, will burn just as bad as it, you know, as you would think it would, but um, when it sets up, it forms what they call, why people buy Gorilla Glue in the first place. It is the extreme temperature glue. So if it gets really hot or really cold, you're not gonna have any issue with that. That's me asking you, you're setting really well. You try not to. I try not to, but if you know what happens to come because I just didn't read, I'll mm -hmm. use it. I will usually kind of sandwich it in between um, some mesh or some ribbon that has a little bit of strength underneath it so that it has like under support and over support. And this is just getting glued right to this waffle mesh, which you can just imagine, you know, mesh and glue, great marriage between the two. We'll open up the picks. Let's see what we can do with this little guy. We will add him into our bow. Let's see if we can find a really small little branch, just like this. Super cute. So just a little bit of glue. I'm gonna tuck that down and glue our lopsided lemon. Tuck that right on the inside. And then that utilizes that pick. I mean, really all I have is some greenery leaves, which I save. I actually have a box that's nothing but oh, like extra greenery that um, you can use wherever you need. Like, oh, I wish I had lemon leaves. Oh yeah, you do. Okay, so let me show you what this looks like here. Okay. Okay, the glue gun, believe it or not, is from Amazon. It is just a Gorilla Glue glue gun. Has the dual settings. Just gotta make sure it has dual settings. Yes. Always I, make sure if you buy a glue gun, and you can find the cheapest glue gun anywhere. I had a sure bonder one, but it just oozed. So like every time you plugged it in, it just would constantly run out the glue stick, mm -hmm. which nobody wants because that's a waste of product. Um, so I found the Gorilla Glue, or the Gorilla Glue gun didn't do that, um, but any dual temperature will help. Um, and then you just use the Gorilla Glue Sticks because those are the extreme temperatures. Mm -hmm. So set it on hot if you want something to stay, you know, really well. If not, if you're just gluing something, it doesn't need to have like that extreme strength. Stays indoors. Just, yeah. yeah, put it on low. Like if I'm gluing scatters and fillers on the ends, I'm using low. Because I'm not worried about that. But picks and stuff like that, yeah. Even so, the likes and loves, service, it, love it. It's all it's done. Good. So this is available for purchase on my website at castrationsandmore.com. I will be back here Sunday at 6 p.m. Pacific, which is 8 Central, 9 Eastern time. And we'll make another fun design. Any questions you guys have? I'm giving it the delay time to kick in. So, all right, guys, we'll have an amazing weekend, and I'll see you on Sunday. Bye for now.